Hi, Akriti. Okay, so um, first of all, before I begin, I uh, want to say it's been a month mm -hmm. and uh, it's just something that came uh, came to me that maybe I should talk to some very interesting people. So I have come across so many people whose, um, you know, lives and journeys that we can learn from. So the, that this initiative just came from there. And before I uh, thank you, clouds of choco sugar, thank you so much for this. So before I begin, I just want to take a mi uh, minute to thank uh, these very f uh, wonderful people. I want to thank Akshi, I want to thank Chaitanya, I want to thank Sahil, Asavri, Sanjoni, Alex and Mukta ma'am. Thank you so much for, for humbling us by sharing your life experiences with us. Some of you had actually shared in public about your life for the first time and I'm, in, I'm indeed humbled because of that. Uh, thank you for teaching us that out of mind is not the best place to be in, but it is. Uh, it can become a place to start your own self-discovery when you're forced to be in a place where, which is called being out of mind. Uh, next, I would like to also thank uh, very quickly all of you for uh, being very supportive. Um, and uh, the last session that we have today, we're going to be discussing this very important topic that some of you said that okay let's talk about body image issues let's talk about eating disorder so that's what i picked up today now we are in the middle of a lockdown so i don't know about you but initially i began eating food like anything so i had a lot of comfort uh, food because there were so many negative emotions that i was experiencing anxiety and ambiguity and okay am i gonna die tomorrow kha lete aaji so, बहुत ही negative emotions को counter करने के लिए बहुत ज़्यादा comfort food खा लिया बहुत ज़्यादा comfort food खाने के बाद लगा चलो exercise कर लेंगे lockdown एक हफ्ते बाद खत्म होगा तो because I I don't exercise at home I usually like to go out and exercise so I thought I didn't exercise a lot and it so happened within the first lockdown 1.0 I I gained weight so the first thing that came to my mind when I gained weight was oh my god I don't want to be fat and no, it didn't come from that my immune system will be bad, or I will get sick, or I will get sick with BP, sugar, or I will get sick with BP, or lifestyle disorders. That's why, but pure and simple reason for, I don't know if, if that's true for you or not, but for me, I don't want to be big. And there, there is this internalized fat shaming, there is this internalized loathing for my own body, uh, especially when it comes to um, being fat. Now, um, I am a feminist. I understand how body image uh, is constructed. I am, understand societal pressures. I understand that women should love their bodies. I understand that women do not are not born. They're not born hating their bodies. I understand that jo fair and lovely or uh, you know fat is fugly. These are all corporate. Th th this is all corporate agenda to actually make you feel bad about your bodies. Because if you start feeling good about your bodies, in cheezo ko khareedne wala koi nahi hoga. So, you have heard of your clothes that you feel good on your clothes. Or you can see a sauna belt. Or you can see so many gym memberships. But they don't sell you that you will be healthy. They obviously try to target that you are small from here, you will be small from here, you will be small from here. And you have seen it. So, uh, uh, what, I, what I want to say over here is that after knowing everything, the mind understands but still, jo ek internalization hui hai, about, this, this internalization of your, you know, about self-loathing for your own bodies, that doesn't go away. So I, I don't think there is any woman over here probably who's joined in or otherwise also who uh, does not experience um, body image concerns. Maybe some of you may have it to a lower degree. Maybe some of you have it to a higher degree. Maybe some of you have it to the extent to which it can be labeled as an eating disorder, but we all do. Now, yesterday, one of my friends actually said that, Itisha, you know what, body image issues are no longer just women's issues. Uh, men also experience body image issues. And I completely agree with that. I don't disagree with that at all. That men also experience body image issues. Many men want to gain weight, have muscle mass, have that six-pack ab which is being presented to them on screen. So, uh, but I also do not disagree that it's also a fact that 9 out of 10 people suffering from eating disorders are women. It's also a fact that when you talk about marriage, in today's date, in any matrimonial alliance, the degree of the girl's degree and the girl's degree is seen in the 
ओके आई ऑल्सो डू नॉट डिसग्री एंड आई ऑल्सो अंडरस्टैंड दैट एक छह साल की लड़की से लेकर एक साठ साल की औरत के लिए बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है मोटा ना होना and this is and that is why i do feel that while men do men do um, experience body image concerns but still uh, the kind of pressures that women experience can it's it's not it may not be comparable having said that i do not mean that men's issues are not relevant but yeah this session is going to be uh, focusing more on um, how uh, on body image issues in general but specifically maybe on women's body image issues so um Uh, if you remember last weekend i had asked you that why don't you guys send in some uh, you know if you feel that the last session i felt that should be one of you guys so should be someone not from my life but maybe if you have a show, story to share that uh, goes with the theme or if you could want to nominate someone that uh, you know who wants to talk about their own life experiences so from there uh, we have identified we have uh, come to this part this participant that we have today now i have with me ishani sirohi now ishani sirohi has battled uh, anorexia nervosa for two and a half years and battle is the right word because she has success she has successfully recovered from anorexia nervosa and to that end she credits her own willpower which she considers to be her superpower and her very uh, her supportive system her support system her friends especially especially so um this is the first time ishani is talking to anyone about uh, body image issues and her uh, anorexia nervosa her condition and uh, i hope we uh, you know we we get to learn because because the reason why she's speaking out today is she said that no i don't want to be pitied but i hope that maybe if i open up there may be young girls out there who may not make the same mistakes as i did and who do not fall prey to social pressures where body uh, bodies are concerned and she loves she's she she's the one who suggested the name of this session which is binging on body positivity so let's call ishani so uh, please feel free to leave comments i think everyone has something or the other to add to this topic there's just so much to be said hi ishani hi isha i'm so glad i finally see you and uh, before we begin this a uh, huge thank you for having me and i've literally spoken to you just one hour and you've driven home points that i had never even pondered upon before so thank you and i think your superpower is listening to people which is so rare these days so thank you for what you do and uh, before beginning a huge shout out to Aksi as well because i wouldn't have done it without her because like i like you mentioned um i'm not here for the sympathy card i really hope that today this session um helps young girls and um i mean see everyone learns from their own mistakes but maybe someone can just have an impact on you somewhere down the line where you actually stop yourself from doing those same mistakes so yes right. thank you for having me and i really hope young girls tune in and listen to this so yes i'm all awesome. right thank you Thank you so much, Ishani, for this. So let's jump into my first question. Now, I I don't believe, like I said, that I don't think there are many girls out here who can confidently say that they they really love their bodies. I think probably seven out of ten girls would say that I'm not sure. I don't think I completely love my body. I don't hate it either, but somewhere in between, perhaps. So maybe some of them do not. qualify what we'd call an anorexia nervosa or bulimia but all of us has to have tried fasting all of us have tried different kinds of fads all of us have yeah. tried different kind of exercises because not again not coming from the fact that oh i want to be healthy but coming from the fact that i hate being fat and um, if i become fat i will not be worthy of love and attention and affection and respect of other people right. so um at the end of the day women have just become like a sum of their body parts okay i want my breast to be enhanced i want my breast to be lesser my butt needs to be this way my stomach needs to be flatter yeah. and uh, there are so many th- th- there was this one uh, uh, you know trend that started uh, thigh gap or something so all these weird and odd trends regarding you know being so harsh and unkind to your bodies keep going viral day in and day out yeah. so um, can you tell us more about your journey through these issues 
Right, right. So, firstly, hate is such a strong word. And for something, as, you come with one body. And to use a word like hate for that is obnoxious, like to start with. But I can totally understand why women feel that way. And um, I gave into these trends. I, I, I agree that these are fads. And, um, but it's the societal pressure that comes on to you at one point. But we'll get, that, we'll get to that in a bit. Is that... Um... It's okay to not be happy with your body because once you really start loving your body, you think, oh, whatever I'm looking at is perfect. You should have a little bit of scope for that strive to go and like improve yourself in any which way, uh, but not hate it. That's definitely, I would, um, uh, something that I advocate in. And I really feel that it has got more to do with um, how you look at yourself um, and how people who constantly keep telling you that, oh, this one part is not good. This one thing is not good. And even in fitness, we have this, I, I get so many requests online saying, girls asking me, how can I have a flat belly? Firstly, there's nothing called spot reduction. You need, if you want to get to a healthier life, it starts from scratch. There is nothing called spot reduction. Can I just do this bit and it'll be perfect? Can I just... Uh, probably enhance this part and can I have a rounder but like Kim Kardashian then I'll be perfect no that that's not how it happens you cannot have no. Sophia Vergara boobs you cannot have a butt like Kim Kardashian and be like now nah, no it's a journey and then it keeps evolving and um, to start with um, sorry but am I audible to you perfect so to start with uh it's got nothing to do with my upbringing because I know that my upbringing was perfect. I um, had parents both in the army and I literally had nothing to strive for, very middle class upbringing, but nothing that was like out of the ordinary or something. And I wasn't told at home, this is not perfect. You don't look perfect. Don't eat this. No, I was never told that. I was given the free will to do whatever I wish to do. And luckily for me, sports shaped a huge part of my um, younger days. So I was really into right. sports and, and um, I was athletic and major part of my uh, teenage days. And um, I was very athletic and I would channelize all my energy like day in and day out in just being into sports. And um, then eventually I came to Delhi and I had never been in a big town. So when I came to Delhi, I was like this child who was left in the open and I was, I was a gaping mouth. Literally, I would look at everything and I'd be like, what, what is this? What is this? And before that, I had never seen McDonald's or Domino's. So I gorged okay. on McDonald's and Domino's. My God, I would have it for breakfast, lunch and, you know, three times a day. And somehow, I don't know if you believe in reverse psychology but that's something that my parents did on me like for long so if I want if I really love something they would hold me with it until I hated it and that's exactly what happened with McDonald's and Domino's I went crazy I gained tons of weight and I was like screw this I'm still gonna go for it and um, right. yeah eventually like every teenager in college um, you have that uh, one thing that okay, maybe now life is going to start. Maybe it's going to be one of those mean girl sessions. And uh, yes, I met a boy and just and um, uh, got into a relationship. Uh, so yeah, so I got into a relationship and um, really thought it was uh, going perfectly well. Mm -hmm. And it was because uh, there's literally nothing that I could have asked for um it was a beautiful relationship so much respect mutual respect and um but then eventually monotony set in and um mm -hmm. uh, so if i mean yeah then we had to move our separate ways and that is when i got admission to in into a b school and i thought oh my mm. god life is taking off from here and i think it was a, one of the worst decisions but i let go of that relationship and I thought moving to Bangalore, I was this Delhi diva who would walk in and the whole campus would turn down and be like, who's this girl? None of that happened. Right. It's quite the contrary. I walked in and I was like, why is no one paying any attention? What is wrong? And um, so uh, 
and if if you know me in person and if i laugh out loud it's going to resonate two blocks away and this is again a, pro- a problem i have with a uh, society like girls are always seen in this um frame mm. where they have to be demented yeah. they have to be coy they have to be a sort yeah. of fragile type otherwise they do not fit into the whole uh, a uh, system of a beautiful girl so that really repelled me and i was like what is wrong why 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 are they, why are the boys not paying any attention to me what have i done and um, so it started from there um, uh, that there, there was th- there was this guy in college and i would like stalk him left right and center silently and he had no idea and um, eventually when he when he spoke to me he was like who are you like get away from me and all my advances were turned down and i i i did not know why and then eventually i moved to bombay for internship there again the same thing happened and i fell for this guy and he was like uh no no bro sorry and i was just like why when i look at myself in the mirror i feel like i'm fine like everything looks fine then why why are my advances being turned down and uh, for the longest time i had no idea and that is when i realized that maybe i don't look uh, good on the outside and that is mm. a problem and um but for me from within i was perfect but when the when when you rejected so many times by rejected i mean when in your head your advances are rejected that's when you feel like mm. okay maybe there's something wrong really wrong with me and i remember i was staying on the 30th floor in bombay in andheri west and um i i um i started this kind of a revenge on myself where i would be like okay bro i'm going to climb up 30 floors and every day after work i would climb up 30 floors and i had stopped eating like completely stopped eating so um mm. there came a point where i lost uh, weight like instantly and everyone started saying oh you started looking good and i realized oh mm. maybe it is the weight uh, that is probably and i and i kept doing it day in and day out and i would put nothing in my body but ex- the the expenditure was 10 times more and um eventually uh, it became a habit uh, it started in 2015 and um i still remember it became a habit and um then i moved back to bangalore back to college and um there was literally no i would have water and i would have the urge to throw up because i would be like there can be nothing in my system because this is going to make me fat and i was far from fat like now i look back and i was like it's far from fat and um luckily for me in college i had the best set of friends who were like a support system to me who were the best support system and um i still remember like i lost out on some very important moments because of this uh, um mm. disorder because i still remember i uh, i was it was my flatmate's birthday and the cake was being cut mm. and all i could think of was wait after i take that bite i need to go throw up because this can't be in my system and uh, you you just mm. don't know why it's happening and you want it to stop but yet you don't and then they came a time when my friends started mocking it in a way that um and my eyes would be swollen all the time my face would be sunken in and you just looked diseased and uh, but, but you don't understand how you stop it because your body wants to purge out and um, right so this started from there um and it kept uh, going spiraling down because there was literally no one to stop um then i right. met this Uh, then i had a flatmate called yashi and i called her god master because literally she to me i don't believe in human worship but when you have that one person who's going to um tell you stuff that you want to hear it it makes you uh, feel like there is someone who understands you and when you have that mm. connection it could be anyone for that matter like I have the best of friends who always tell me that no matter how you look whether you start working out today we're going to be there for you and that's kind of encouragement that you really need to get through a disorder like that and uh, when it becomes a habit it's worse and um you, you know like people can only stop you but eventually when you want to stop is when the disorder stops cuz mm. it's like you can take the horse to the pond but you can't make it drink water 
so that that's yeah. what and yeah. yeah she always told me that you know opinions like when i became stick thin then people started saying I, I was literally so thin that you could do an anatomy test. You could you could tell where the ribs are. You could tell where the bone is because that that's how bad it had become. And and you know she told me that um, opinion. Are you with me? Yeah, me. Yeah. So I'm just gonna repeat. Yeah, I was saying. Yeah, yeah. Please do. Because yeah. and and excuse my language, but she always said that opinions are like assholes, and everyone has one. So so when you become that thin people are going to be like oh yeah. you're so thin and when you you not yeah. thin, then people are going to be like oh you're not thin so everyone's going to have a problem yeah. whatever yeah. you look like you just need to right. be okay with yourself right now i'm not saying that even right now i'm okay because i see on social media and i want to bulk up right now and i look at those women and i'm like why can't i be like that what, what is wrong right and you need to understand that there is a genetic construct that you're born with and yeah. you cannot change that like you need to go on to anabolics and other supplements if you want to change beyond that mm-hmm. so um mm-hmm. like like you said that it's mm-hmm. you need to draw a line till where mm-hmm. you are okay with pushing yourself it mm-hmm. and you, you will have people who are going to mm-hmm. accept believe it or not and when you're going through this disorder you don't want to tell yourself that people are still going to accept you but at all points no matter what you do, are going to be people who will accept you the, for the way you are yeah so that's about that so yes right okay so i i um, there's this one thing that you mentioned which i'm just picking up from what you talked about that uh, so when you are rejected by uh, the opposite sex and yes. it could be for many reasons the person sim- something as simple as not interested um yeah. or there could be n number of reasons actually lekin uh, for a woman it somehow get ends up with am i not good looking enough rather than i'm not good enough so yeah. we always tend to take it that physically not attractive and that that's perhaps the reason why i was rejected in the first place right. now the thing about um the thing about this uh, you know physical attraction part is that uh, sorry physical attractiveness part is that no matter how good looking women become no uh, first of all like you said everyone's going to have some comment or the other aap patle ho tab comment hai aap patle nahi ho tab comment hai exactly. lekin um women women are not recognized for their intelligence women are not recognized for their kindness women are not recognized for their any other attribute except looks at the end of the day so i've seen so many uh, women especially in context of arranged marriage it gets extremely you can say it it's it gets so nasty downright nasty where people just feel that ki bhai kitna aapki ladki to bahut moti hai aapki ladki to bahut kali hai is tarah ki comments bahut common hai Right. men do not receive those kind of very harsh statements and very harsh comments because right. till date i remember this one incident that i'd like to share over here that couple of uh, i think years ago my dad just made me introduce you know him uh, me to one of his uh, friends and he said a lot of good things my dad said a lot of good things like oh she's done her phd she's teaching in delhi university and blah blah but the first thing that this man says is oh beta bahut achhi height hai aapki and i'm like out of all the things that he's he said all the compliments that he's given to me you pick up my height exactly and, and I, the only response i could give is yeah i worked really hard on it thank you <laughs> <laughs> yeah all your accomplishments are brought down to zero and that that yeah. is what breaks your confidence and and see everything spirals from your confidence like you you make you either made or break basis that and when i was told when I, when my advances were rejected and i could not figure out for the life of me what is wrong is when my confidence yeah. like totally deteriorated yeah. because before that i was in a very protected environment my 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 long term mm-hmm. my my boyfriend before that my parents i was in fact in my relationship that did sustain for the longest time i was made to feel right. so comfortable that i w- i had become a helium balloon like literally I, we would just gorge gorge on like food and that that's what but and my friends from there have continued so you know like it, it remains 
but but i agree with you that that's one thing that boys never face which we women are always subjected to how we are supposed to look a certain way mm-hmm. and um, that's kind of disheartening for, uh, for for people to not see the personality to not see the kindness to not see the not see the being but actually see mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. You know, just mm-hmm. body just and, the body um, the exterior exactly and and there's so much more to women than just that and i still remember that um my confident is confidence issue had um reached an all time low that even when i would go out clubbing and i would have a drink and i was like one second i need to throw up cuz what if my belly pops out and 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 you 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 do not know when to stop cuz it's it's horrible yeah. like and and my right. friends kind of knew where i was going but then So, so that's the whole thing. Like, um, everyone's got an opinion. There, there are people yeah. who like dusky. There are people who like thin. There are people who like curvy. And and it's just like, what is wrong? Like, it's okay. You just need to accept yourself for being what you are, and not be so harsh on yourself. So yes, and I I I, I hope everyone finds a productive outlet for that, for all the negative energy yeah. that's channeled in, and uh, coming yeah. to. coming from that i think i took to fitness because uh, before that i'd never seen a gym and uh, uh, i i thought gym is only for bodybuilding i thought you're going to just walk in there and walk out with six pack abs and a 16 inch uh, bicep little did i know that it's a place for fitness anyone can go at any level and it's got nothing to do with bodybuilding and um, but still when i walked into um, when i walked into my college gym for the first time the only equipment i was familiar was, with was a treadmill and i was like i'm going to go crazy on this i'm going to not stop like to and i would do 4 hours of cardio every day followed by 2 hours of badminton practice cuz i was on the badminton team in my college and uh wow. i have nothing in my system to sustain it and mm. um that kind of led to a host of other problems which i am still dealing with so um, you need mm-hmm. to understand that you are living in that disorder in that moment but it's going to have an impact mm-hmm. on you lifelong and um mm-hmm. i developed pcos i developed so many other nutritional deficiencies at one point i had typhoid mm-hmm. and dengue together and my platelets had dropped and it, it was all because my immune system had nothing to come back mm-hmm. to from it and that that's yeah. when you need to stop cuz either you you killing yourself at that point and is it really worth it like uh who is uh deciding your worth others when you when you take charge of your own worth is yeah. when you realize yeah. that it wasn't worth it and that's what i was telling you the other day as well that i swung from having no confidence to being absolutely complete within myself so much so that now i do not want to go out on a date because i feel no one's worth it like i am the best <laughs> and i know that's a very that's a, and and you explain something so perfectly which i would like you to tell what actually you drove home for me at that point see i uh, i i remember t- telling you that uh, so you've gone from absolutely depending on others for validation to needing no one else for your validation and yes. this is the other extreme so i was kind of wondering whether you know the process now to you know in your growth is to move more towards the balance kind of perspective needing loving yourself and yet you know being vulnerable with other people is right is right and that is that something told me that day that that really uh, kind of made me feel i'm still recovering like you know i'm trying to meet myself in the middle somewhere but right now i just the pendulum has swung to the other side of the spectrum where i i'm kind of very happy and um yeah right. so fitness yeah i i so from the treadmill thing i picked up fitness and i would do no weights cuz i thought i'm going to make a joke out of myself even if i pick up one dumbbell it's either going to fall on my own foot or i'm going to hurt someone else so i did mm. extreme cardio and i would uh, just just go all out like a duracell bunny non stop non stop just cardio 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 cuz i knew about no other wow. 
and then i came to delhi mm-hmm. and i was like okay maybe i'm going to buy two dumbbells and let's see what happens and mm-hmm. i bought two dumbbells and um, believe me i did home workouts for one and a half years i would just be in my room in a 5 by 5 space and i did a uh, workouts day in and day out and i would just follow youtube videos and learn right. basics and um, right. one because again lack of confidence i thought i can't walk into a gym where people are so fit and they're going to look down upon me and um, right. then eventually i was like okay i'm i'm just going to do it and you won't believe me i went straight for the best gym in the town like from home workouts i went to the best gym and i realized there's no big deal you can be mm. um, you can be whoever you are and you can still walk mm. in and find a productive way to channelize it and for me that became and, and my friends used to be like are you crazy working out 4 hours a day is at least better than sitting and throwing up for 4 hours a day i'm doing something productive it gives me happiness it's it's working towards building my better a uh, few to oh yeah or oh, whatever it is it's giving me some sort of satisfaction and it's stopping me from harming myself so uh, right, right. that kind of really helped me and um, so yes uh, uh i wanted to ask this over here now excessive exercising is also going to be one of the symptoms of let's say eating disorders bahut zyada exercise karna now now anyone who's gone through your instagram wall knows that you're a fitness enthusiast yeah. now if we do not have a history of your eating disorder then maybe it would not come as a question in my mind but what is common between so being a fitness enthusiast is also not to the extent that we see you are is also not a regular thing not everyone can be like that so yeah. uh, con- so when you are let's say controlling your body through how much would go in versus controlling your body through regular exercise would would you say both of them have something in common which is a control over your body and how do you get to know what is productive and what is counterproductive and where that that line that you were talking about that you draw how do you come to know about that okay of um, you know controlling yourself but uh, uh i feel that uh Okay, look at it this way. Okay, there's point A and there's point B, and point. So I actually uh, made a note of it. So you know, you you think of like point A being eating disorders, and point B being your healthy self. Okay, now you have to get from point A to point B, and there is a highway and there is a service road, and the service road is completely mm-hmm. dilapidated. Would you take the highway or would you take the service road? Obviously, you would take the highway, right? So for me, workout right. works. It's a productive way of channelizing my energy because that's how okay. I have been brought up. Like I was so heavily into sports that that's something that I take upon. Also, my attention span mm-hmm. is five minutes, and for people who are close to me, know that even finishing a one-hour movie for me is a task. I take three days. So everyone has a certain something. that will help mm-hmm. them so you you need to find your aptitude mm-hmm. when you're dealing with this mm-hmm. these kind of disorders mm-hmm. just take mm-hmm. a step back which is easier said than done but take a step back and introspect that there's got to be something something that you look forward to right and it could be anything for you if you, if you, if you like to binge watch movies and you say that i'm going to get up mm-hmm. at 8 am and i'm going to binge watch eight movies by all means please go ahead if you say that i'm going to finish eight books this week go ahead whatever gives mm-hmm. you that kind of discipline you just need a certain kind of discipline a routine a routine to like break through these disorders and for me that was fitness for me i felt that um i i i still day i sleep at night that uh, helps you mm-hmm. create a routine and a discipline like till date i go to right. sleep knowing that i'm going to get up tomorrow and i'm going to do an abs workout and that keeps me so excited that i i mean i do get sleep but then that that's the first thing i want to do in the morning i want to get up i want to get get going because that that's what helps me and um anything you just just need to find the one there's a feel good there's a feel good uh, 
you were not feeling happy and you were not feeling good after throwing up but there's a feel good associated factor associated with exercising absolutely absolutely and i feel that it could be Positive any frame of mind that you're in. yeah right right and if books work for you that's brilliant if movies work for you that's great if yeah. hanging with yeah. at cafes work for you please go over and make it your passion make it work for you like it my friends yeah. pushed me so hard to start like putting up workout videos yeah. and like they told yeah. me that it's going to work for you it's going to help others and that's when i actually started doing it because before that i would just like film yeah. myself and be like oh yeah gains good gains nice gains i get in and the so comments they you, you got lots of compliments how so many people have commented how your workout videos have helped them <laughs> yes yeah, i'm glad and, and believe me i didn't pay anyone to write any comments it just coming from within them <laughs> of of course i i can understand i can completely understand so ishani um closest friends like some of my closest friends have pulled me back from this and and uh, coming yeah. to that i just want to make a one very important point that the biggest mistake you can do when you're dealing with such disorders is to close yourself do not do that mm. ever and uh, my mother is uh, my mother is a passer from afmc and she has been a doctor in the indian mm. army for 30 years so there's literally no right. one else who could have understood me better but i refrained right. uh, from uh, speaking to them not because i knew that not because i thought that they won't understand but because there was a little apprehension and that's why my friends stepped in so so like i said in the right. beginning it could be anyone for you uh, it could be um, it could be your parents it could be your soulmate it could be your boyfriend it could be a girlfriend it could be whoever you want to go to but but uh, li- like i said for me it was that one person who like literally told me what i wanted to hear so yeah right 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 so ishani um i just wanted to make this quick point here that see um in our culture for instance we've always preferred voluptuous bodies over extremely skinny bodies राइट सो हमारे यहाँ जैसे कोई अगर मोटा होता है तो हम बोलते हैं खाते पीते खानदान के यू नो एंड इन फैक्ट बींग पतला टू बी एसोसिएटेड विद इसको तो खाना ही नहीं मिलता है तो गरीब खानदान से गरीब घर से आ रहे हैं कि इसको खाना ही नहीं मिलता है सो इन 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 दैट केस यू नो वाई वी स्टार्ट रनिंग आफ्टर ऑफकोर्स वी अंडरस्टैंड इज दैट द वेस्टर्न मीडिया द वे दे प्रेजेंट सो वी हैव दैट वन आइडियल ब्यूटी आइडियल विच इज एक्सट्रीमली स्किनी एंड फेयर ऑफकोर्स so uh we've talked about all these comments i mean but thankfully like you mentioned you did not come from a house where your parents uh where you got to hear this from your parents or from your neighborhoods that okay aisa itna mat khao utna mat khao mote ho jaoge kaale ho jaoge but many women uh many women sorry i'll just wait for you to connect again but uh you've not come from those families but many uh, girls including some that i've talked to they've heard this very commonly ki moti ho gayi itna khati rehti hai aur dhoop mein khel rahi hai itni kali ho jayegi shaadi kaun karega ya patli ho gayi achhi lag rahi hai even compliments so called compliments like patli kitni achhi lagti hai tu patli ho ja and right. so there's this all something like we already discussed that people or everyone has an opinion now when there are some girls or legit cases where people develop body image issues to that extent where they'll start uh you know they they'll start starving themselves they'll start exercising hours and hours in a day they'll start throwing up and along with that like you talked about there are many associated medical conditions that may they may even have so uh when they do reach that that point where they sh- they, n- they need a support where you said that you couldn't stop you didn't want to do it but you couldn't stop so right. even when they reach that point society doesn't take them seriously at all family societies friends they tend to think it's attention seeking or she's doing it very deliberately and ye to aajkal ka fashion ho gaya hai sari ladkiyan karti hain throwing up specially for instance so there's yeah. no support there's no seriousness in hamari country there are dual problems we suffer from the urban centers have things to think that in our society 
no i think there's there's some that ha huh, so in our urban centers we have problems like eating disorders but in a rural settings right till date we have malnutrition so india is a country where we have these both we have obesity we have eating disorders and we have malnutrition to bahut logo ko lagta hai tumhe to tumhe to khana milta hai aur tum phekte ho ya nahi khate ho tum you know there there all of these there's there's very little understanding of eating disorders till date so um it's 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 for so for women it's really uh, heads uh, you know it, it's really a lose lose situation to be in so uh, would you want to comment something about that yeah the question was that what do you want uh, th- there's a lot of stigma again against uh, eating disorders that nobody even thinks that this could be some kind at least in the west there is some recognition but here there is absolutely none right so what do you have to yeah. say to that so what that that's something that um, the 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 whole journey when spiraling down for me when people started saying oh patli achhi lag rahi hai and that kind of made that thing in my head that i have to be stick thin and when someone you know like tells you that and it's kind of unfortunate that these issues are not being dealt with uh, so seriously uh, because possibly depression alzheimer schizophrenia these are things that are being recognized in india now whereas in the west it's like a whole different scenario already and and thank, you know right. only when uh, only when uh, movies like bones comes out with uh, lily collins or there is uh, when netflix goes in like a super high budget i am maris are these issues even like heard about and and like you rightly said they're not even like heard about in the rural rural yeah. area they don't know anything about anorexia yeah. or about uh, bulimia mm-hmm. and um, right. and that's kind of a little unfortunate that uh, till day that no one takes them seriously for me luckily um i i am one of those who my friends took it very seriously my had i spoken to my parents they would have just, but but it's all about trying like you need to try and uh, who are these people who say that uh, it's become a trend people who do not know someone who has gone through it those are the people who actually say <laughs> but if you know someone who's right. gone through it or if you remotely even have heard of some incident you will not dare to speak some about that it's like in india jab tak khud bhi nahi beetti you don't understand it like it, you, you 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 need to experience it so that is where it comes from like uh, i know someone who is with depression and in my lifetime i'm not going to mock depression itisha you with me Yeah, I'm. I'm yeah, 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 so, yeah we connected. Yeah. So, so that's that's exactly what I feel like. You know, till you don't experience something, um, society is always mm-hmm. looked down upon it. But like, okay. like you know, when I said uh, when I was hearing your talk about that uh, parental uh, autism, aut- autism, yes, yeah, autism. I felt, autism. Uh, yeah, I felt mm-hmm. that you know that mother, everything that she has gone through, she understands the world way more than yeah. we can ever because mm-hmm. she's experienced it. similarly now that my friends know that they there is someone who's dealt with eating disorders they don't mock it they take it more compassionately yeah. so so society right. not going to understand till there is one of their family members or their friends or their sisters and brothers and mothers or someone who's gone through right. that so i just right. did a little rap there but but yeah i mean you 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 get the drift of it that you know like that that's what right. i feel. so It's okay if people don't understand you. You understand yourself. Go talk to someone who you think will understand. If that person doesn't understand, go to a third right. person who might just understand. But you gotta keep trying. You gotta communicate. For me, like I said, that that one person for me was yeah, she my my flatmate, and you know, like my 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 other friends, like a lot of other friends also. Like, yeah, yeah, So I I I got that. I think um you're very, yes yes you're very right in saying that ki um not everyone will be understanding but at least what we're doing today for instance I think um agar wapas ja ke do panch logo ne bhi ye samjha ki eating disorder and the lack of controllability that's there especially you like you said you did not want to throw up but it's 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 that's why it's disorder there's no control that you have over here yes. and you really need to yes. 
but kudos to you ishani that i mean you've mentioned that you didn't go for any formal therapy or counseling yes um and you find yourself much better now on yes. the way to recovery or recovery yes. uh, or recovered successfully recovered so what are some of the factors that you would say have helped you along um especially moving from your journey of uh, self love to self loathing so so it's still an ongoing journey it's it's i i wish i could say i uh, i am uh, there are five days out of 365 days where i still feel like oh my god is this the right thing to do and then i stop myself just thinking about all the long term disastrous impact that it's had on me and that's when i feel like right. please don't do this to yourself like if you have even like 0.5% respect for yourself don't do it stop this right going to like self loving now and like i feel so complete within myself that that the absolute urge to have someone else complete me is gone and when when that happens when when you can sustain yourself basis that and you don't find happiness in anyone else but yourself you you feel like you you good so so that that's that's what changed for me and and i would have gone for therapy i have absolutely no problem luckily i i saved some money because of my amazing friends like i said my support system that has gone yeah. stood by me for everything and i can and i and, and you know you don't have to be with someone uh, just because you know them for the last 20 years right. if there's a negative right. impact in your life you could have known them for 25 years for all you get let go of it like let like, let's just let it be surround yourself with positive people you could have met someone two months ago but they'll they'll have a greater and better impact on you than someone you've known all along so right. it's okay keep exploring right. and uh, right. yeah yeah so that's my right. two cents i think, uh, i really like, yeah i think i really liked something that you said the other day when we talked which was that uh, you did not go for therapy but that does not mean that it you don't want to present a picture that people don't need therapy Absolutely. or someone with eating disorder it's through you know your own sheer will that you can get out of it uh, if you have yeah so i think uh, it's very important yeah. to, for you I, that's that's all i was just wanted to point that out over here because i feel that some people can actually feel a little miserable thinking oh do i not have enough respect for myself or oh, you know they can get into depression just thinking about it do i not have the kind of positivity the, this person has wo kar sakti hai bina therapy ke to main kyun nahi kar sakti hu yes so it's not really a competition yeah right and you need to understand that as well that uh, um individualistic you you very uh, everyone's very different right my will power is not that of yours and probably your ability to listen is something i completely lack so so you need to understand that if, if if my will power is enough for me to hold myself back then maybe that works and probably i had not spiraled down to that or maybe even if i had i got safe by certain sect of thoughts but for for others maybe their will power determination may not be as strong and what is wrong in seeking help i don't understand like till day if i'm doing some and i i will connect it to fitness because that's the only one thing that i understand but if i am doing some exercise right. wrong and i know that someone else is an expert of it i go to that person and i blatantly shamelessly ask that um you know how do you do it right, right? and till day there has been absolutely no one who's put me down and said i'm sorry i'm not going to teach you uh uh because mm. whatever you're not paying me um there's no one like that and i i don't think there's anyone who's ever going to tell someone that don't talk to me don't tell me your problems like that. even if after that person goes you turn around and be like oh my god that was long but you, you still on your face no one and at least you let it out of your system right so that that's all that matters and i think you should seek help in any which way form what yeah that's more help. important absolutely right Right. Sometimes having the kind of support system that you do, which I can kind of read all in those comments, the kind of support system that you have is I can have also to, be a privilege. I have that to mention a few names before this goes because they made it an award show, <laughs> and if I do not, I'm going to be dead by the end of this live call. So yes, custard. Price. For sure. Yes, yes, I have like. For that. sure. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. I'll just skip to a few questions that came in between. Yeah. So, yeah. um 
I think there was this one question that someone had asked, Sakshi had probably asked. Now she was asking that, uh, do you, I think I'm just finding that Did Sakshi had asked a question about, kind of, kind of, do you also kind of uh, fluctuate between self-confidence and self-doubt till date, Absolutely. like, or? Absolutely, all the time. And who doesn't? And, and if you think you're completely confident, there is no scope for improvement. There has to be that little uh, scope where you can go beyond what you think of yourself. I look at fitness influencers and I... I I am like, how are they doing it? Why can't I do so? Why can't I lift that kind of weight? But you need to understand, it's a process. You can't step into the gym and do a hundred kg squat. No, that's not possible. You and 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 sometimes patience runs out. Like in the moment, I want that. I want to do that. Why can't I do it? But just step yeah. out for that moment. Believe in yourself that you will reach it, and that is where I. Uh, probably swing between self confidence and self love. Till I, I I I started doing headstands pretty well, but five months ago, if you asked me to do a headstand, I would like the wobbly beam that would fall all over. So it's it's like a process that you build on, and you need to have faith in the system. That that's that's only one thing I would say. Right. So uh, Akshi's asked this question: What would you say to oh. people who swing from one spectrum to another that might you know from starving to binging binge eating or not uh, moving a finger and then over exercising so about this like when you extreme you starve yourself a lot and then you binge eat or when you are not at all exercising and then suddenly you start exercising 4 hours a day or something so what's happening yes. there so again like this is something you explained to me that you go from one end of the spectrum to the other because you have been there for so long that the only thing left is to explore the other end of the spectrum. And you nose dive into it because this thing has not worked for you or maybe you're done with it and you want to see what's there at that end. And from starving, you go to binging and then from binging, you suddenly realize, oh my God, what have I done to myself? I have gained all this weight. Now I need to lose it. Yeah. And then you spiral bounding into that. And believe me, when you start doing that, you are so close to a life-changing injury that you're going to be doomed. So that is a practice. And I tell Akshi all yeah. the time. Like, uh, So I personally monitor, not monitor, but I really pester her to know what she's done today. I'm like, what did you, what workout did you do today? What, what did you do today? And, and there are days when I tell her, yeah. stop, because she like a Terminator just burns 2000 calories. I'm like, are you crazy? I, I don't do that. Don't do that to yourself. Like you're so close to an injury that might just change it. And Right now, I am suffering from an injury and had this injury happened to me five months ago, I would have probably stopped eating or something. But now, I'm eating all the more because mm -hmm. I know that I need to recover because that's one part of my body that needs the nutrients to recover. So, it's a constant right. process. And, and this is where I feel like I hope the young girls are listening to not make these mistakes, to mm -hmm. not go from starvation to binging to over-exercising to under exercising to injuries and a whole lot of other issues it's not worth it is all i want to say it's not worth it right, right, right. ishani we'll have to call it a day because they're yes. going to disconnect us in one hour yes. Yes, <laughs> instagram sure. lights on only there i but i wish we could continue this conversation but thank you so much yes. especially so it's the first know. time you've spoken I about it custard, Prachi. thank you so much for your unyielding <laughs> support do not kill me after this <laughs> <laughs> it's it was a pleasure uh, talking to you and before we end this i want to say something to you that thank you for helping out all the people that you are because it's 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 a rare ability to to be able to hear our people hear out their problems process it and empathetically or sympathetically deal with it because people nowadays do not do that and i don't know how much it takes and sometimes you don't know what the other person's problems are so just be yeah. a little more kind yeah. And um, a little yeah. more compassionate because everyone is dealing with some sort of problem or the other. So yeah, that that's all I would like to say. And thank you for everything you do. And and I think the most unconventional approach of psychology is what you follow, and not books, <laughs> which is such a refreshing change for everyone. And you're so approachable, which is another thing. Like 
half the people don't go to therapist thinking that oh my god he is going to roger <laughs> me i don't know what you're going to ask and that is the reason so thank you for everything you do and it was a wonderful experience vishali thank you for those warm words they really make my weekend thank you so much for that I hope and you have a great um, sorry i hope you have a great weekend because in this lockdown i really don't know when is monday tuesday wednesday friday <laughs> so yes. yes yes but if anyone's out there who wants some advice on home workout in the lockdown <laughs> then you can follow ishani on her page on instagram page ishani sirohi so okay thank shana. you thank you itisha It was amazing speaking Lovely to you. Lovely talk. Good night. Thank you. See you. Bye. Bye.